So should we, for like the ribbon ones, should we always draw it? Is there like a key to when we should draw and when we should? Because some of them we just showed the mirror image and we were like, okay, those work. Oh, well, uh, because I thought it was so obvious that when you rotated it, they would be the same. Okay. But maybe since we're, we're beginning here, maybe I should have, also I was trying to save time by not redrawing it as well. Uh, actually, it, when you're actually doing the problems, you should probably, anytime you think that you can rotate or flip a picture so it'll look like the other, now that, then that we're beginning students, we should always actually draw the picture to prove that. I haven't done that in a couple cases to save time because we have a lot of material to go through. But um, if I was actually doing problems in the homework, I would draw every single picture. All right, because I think at first, you, um, all right, so anyway, um, that would give us this. Now, um, let's see, what happened then to the bond between these two nitrogens? Um, so this nitrogen now, Let's start this nitrogen and figure out where this nitrogen is going to end up that the bottom nitrogen is attached to. In the back, back on the right. Yeah, when we, when we flip, everybody who was on the left goes to the right. Like my pinky here is going from the left to the right. And also, here my pinky is point, pointing into the board, and now my pinky is facing out of the board. So this nitrogen is going to end up over here. And now these are bound. It's kind of hard to get all the lines to work here now without crossing. But now these two are going to be bound. Because they were bound over here. And finally, what happens to these two? Well, where is this nitrogen going? In the back. Yeah. Obviously, it's going to the left. But what might not be obvious is it's going onto the dash. And this nitrogen is going over here. And they're still bound. These might have been the easiest. Maybe you might want to start with these and do the other ones later, or whatever you like. So notice what I do here is I kind of do each pair of connected nitrogens one at a time, thinking about them carefully. So that would give us this picture. So those wouldn't be optical Right. So everyone see how we got this picture? Does this make sense? This is the hard skill right here. The hard skill is drawing what a molecule would really look like if you rotated it. Drawing what a molecule would look like if you rotate is not that easy. Not impossible, but it takes some practice. Um, so are these now, are these pictures identical? And they're not. Notice that here, the top nitrogen is connected to the back nitrogen. Mm -hmm. But in this picture, the top nitrogen is connected to the front nitrogen. That might seem like a very minor difference, but that's like the difference between um, putting a right, hand, uh, a right foot shoe on your right foot or putting a left foot shoe on your, left, uh, on your right foot. There, there's actually makes a big difference. Um, by the way, there was a, uh, your instructor might have talked about this. This is of very extreme practical importance um, because um, the molecules in your body are handed. The enzymes, there's a difference between left-handed and right-handed enzymes. Um, and if you want to design a drug for the body, you have to design it to work correctly with the enzymes. And so if, you're, it's like if, you, direct, if you make the wrong version, it's like um, trying to put, again, your left-handed shoe on your right foot. Um, so this is a very practical issue in pharmaceuticals, trying to get the right in antimer. All right, so, um, so since these are, the mirror image, even when we rotate it, is still not identical. Now, the frustrating thing is we only tried one rotation. Maybe there's a different type of flip of rotation that would make them identical. So we should try maybe at least two to see. Um, all right, so let's try um, a different type of uh, flip of rotation. Uh, I'll go back to this picture here, although you might try flipping this picture instead. Now, in this case, uh, what did I do? I flipped around this vertical axis. Here I flipped around this vertical axis. Let's flip around a different axis. Um, let's flip around this axis. And this is something you really have to do for some of these problems. So. so now we're going to try rotating along this axis. Let's go through this together, because I think this is hard. Let's summarize what we learned in the previous case, though. What did we learn about rotating around the vertical axis? Well, we saw when we rotated around the vertical axis, anyone who started on the left ended up on the right. Mm -hmm. Just like my pinky here is on the left, and now it's on the right. But what's surprising is that we learned when you flip around the vertical axis, anybody who used to be on a dash turns into a wedge. And anyone who used to be on a wedge turns into a dash. Like here, my pinky is pointing away from you, and now it's pointing towards you. That's the surprising fact. 
but nothing changed for the things on the axis, because that's what we're rotating around. These nitrogens were in the same positions before and after. It's only the things that are rotating around the axis that change. So it helps to identify the axis that you're rotating around. Now I'm going to try rotating along this axis, which is harder to visualize because it's not all on the plane of the board. So we'll try to go through that together. So I'm going to just draw these nitrogens. These are still in the same position as before. All right, um, and now let's say that we're, say, um, uh, if we're rotating around this axis, um, I could say this nitrogen would be going out of the board around that, and then which way would this nitrogen be going? Yeah, this must be rotating into the board if these are rotating around this axis. I could rotate the other way, but I have to choose one. So I'm going to put a star here. Where is this nitrogen going to end up then? Where will the star nitrogen end up when I rotate around this axis out of the board? Yeah, it's going to rotate from here to here. here let's put it another way. Um, I'm going to try rotating here 90 degrees before we try a 180 degree rotation. But here, let's do a 90 degree rotation. So it's clear that we can't rotate from up here to down here, because that would be a 180 degree rotation. I'm going to do a 90 degree rotation. Well, that means the only place this could go is from here to here. So the star of nitrogen has ended up in this position. Now, who is this nitrogen supposed to be bound to? Oh, that's a tricky one. Oh, no, no, this is not so tricky. So who should this nitrogen here be bound to? Yeah, the dash toward the left. Here, this was bound to the thing on the dash and towards the left. And this guy's not moving, right? Because he's on the axis we're rotating around. So this connection still exists. It's just that we moved the nitrogen from this position down to this position. So the bond has gone from here to here. So that's what's happened to that pair of nitrogens. All right, um, what's happened to this nitrogen? Well, it hasn't moved. It's on the axis. Um, where is this nitrogen going? I'm sorry. Where is this nitrogen going to be rotated to? Yeah, it can't get rotated all the way here because that would be a 180 degree rotation. And it can't get rotated here because this position isn't moving. So really this is the only place that's left as a possibility. So this nitrogen has gone from here to here. If this is going into the board, um, this right? oh yeah, I haven't drawn this yet. This should also be going into the board. So since it used to be pointing towards you, now it's going to be in the plane of the board, moving away from you. All right, and this was bound to this nitrogen over here. So I have to figure out where this is going to go. So is that, um, so the, the back dash? The dash mm -hmm. and to the right, yeah. Um, it can't go to here because this is the axis we're rotating around. It can't go to here because that would be 180 degrees. So really the only logical place is to here. We said this was rotating in. So if it started in the plane of the board, it should go now be pointing away from you. This seems like a bigger movement than it is because it seems like it's also pointing up now. But we know this dash isn't really pointing up. It's just pointing straight into the board. Now, again, it's a little hard to draw this uh, bond, but I guess I could draw it like this. So these two um, were bound over here. Uh, and now this bond has gone from this position to this position. All right, um, this nitrogen hasn't moved because it's on the axis, so we have to figure out where this nitrogen is going to go. Well, there's only one space left, but hopefully it makes sense that this is going to rotate 90 degrees up to this position. Since this is going out of the board, it's going to drag this in to replace it. And who should this be bound to? The wedge on the right. Yeah. This is confusing for me. Yeah, you know, they were bound over here, so it should still, and this guy's not moving, so it should still be bound to this guy on the axis, uh, so I'm going to have to make my lines cross here. So those are still bound, like that. All right, so that's how we do a 90 degree rotation around an axis that's going into and out of the board.